Hello and welcome to the Ground Noise and the Cubase Beginner Secrets Tutorial. Things like how to set up the audio connections or manage the plugins, all that boring stuff, right? Okay, let's start. Here we are in Cubase and the first thing we want to look at is this center part, this center area. It's the main part of Cubase where all the music will appear, all the parts and tracks and so on. It basically works like a multi-track tape machine back in the old days. Remember? Oh no, I never want to go back. Now let's open an instrument to see if we have sound. We do it with a right click in this area or by using this plus sign here to open this fancy menu. Ooh, that's too beautiful for me. I always go with a right click, that's enough for me. Today I only need an instrument track, but if you want to know uh, more about all the other track types here in Cubase, let me know in the comments so that I can make another video for you, okay? So we have just created a new track with the Hellion Sonic instrument. And to open that instrument, we need to click here. And because I know that it looks really confusing in the beginning, I quickly load a piano sound, just a random one, piano concert or something. Here's the big question. Can we hear something? Wow, it works. Perfectly fine. But in your case, it can happen that you can't hear anything. Something's wrong. So what could be wrong, I will show you. At first, check out if you have enabled record on that actual track. You do it with this red button. Now you will hear nothing, but it's enabled. Then we hear something. Also, you can use the monitor and uh, disable record. You still hear something because monitor is activated. But more important is the thing that I show you right now. We go to studio and studio setup. This is the place where you set up the ASIO driver. Wow, what is an ASIO driver? Well, ASIO stands for ah, audio stream in and out. It's the most important thing to make your computer and Cubase and all your sound sources communicate together properly. Okay, let's slow down for a minute. I know it's super boring, but excuse me. You might already know that we have basically two different types of signals in audio production. First is the MIDI signal, which comes from a MIDI instrument like a synthesizer or the drum set you see behind me. MIDI sends just signals of the notes, note on, note off, uh, velocity, all that information to the computer and uh, the actual sound is not created in the instrument, but in the computer, in Cubase. On the other hand, we have real audio signals like a microphone or guitars or other acoustic instruments. We need to find a way to turn their analog signals into digital ones that the computer can understand. And that's normally a job for an audio interface. While you only need a USB cable to connect a modern MIDI instrument like this beautiful master keyboard here with the computer, and if you only have an older synthesizer that has no USB, simply buy a MIDI to USB cable adapter that will do the job. But the audio interface is normally a piece of hardware where you can connect your microphone, for example, and it transforms that analog signal into a digital one and send that to the computer. And the ASIO driver is a piece of software that makes sure that a computer works perfectly with all the MIDI and audio signals that are coming in. In this list here, you see all the drivers that are installed on your computer. In my case, it's the ASIO for all driver, a very common one. Many people are using this, but chances are very high that your audio interface comes with a dedicated driver. In my case, it's a Behringer USB audio. That's the driver that I normally use. Uh, in order to be able to record this video here, I need to use this driver. And don't worry, switching between these drivers isn't very problematic. It's just a click and you not even have to restart Cubase or your PC like in the old days. Normally the ASIO driver is dedicated to Cubase. This means as long Cubase is running, you can't have sound in another application like a player or your browser if you want to look up something on YouTube. And in order to make that happen, that you can have sound in other applications as well, you don't need to close Cubase all the time, check this one here, release driver when application is in background. 
That's very practical in a typical home studio scenario like in mine here where everything needs to run on one PC. You might also want to check out the next line here where you can find all these specific extras and, and, and settings for that particular driver you're using. But in my experience, you don't need to worry too much about that. Let's finally look at another very important window. It's uh, again under studio and all your connections or simply hit F4. And here you want to check out the tabs for the inputs and outputs. Sometimes it looks like this and tells you not connected. Mm, that's bad. Click on it and choose your driver. And now it works. Input the same thing. Not connected in my case. But now we have all the channels connected and are ready to go. Are you still with me? Good, because I have more Cubase beginner secrets for you. I do it very quickly, but before I continue, I want to thank you for your support. The fact that you clicked on this video and are still here, very cool. Please don't forget to leave a like if you like the video and if you like me. And subscribe to the channel, okay? I'm just kidding, but subscribe. I have five more things to show you. At first, go to Project and Project Setup, where you can add a display bar offset to your project, because normally a project starts at bar one, but it's not very practical. Sometimes you need a little bit more room before that, and you can add this room, I go for four bars. So you can see I have added four more bars before bar number one, where I still would start my project. It's up to you if you need this feature. Next, for a musician like me who still plays most of its parts in a traditional way with his fingers, a click track is very important. You find the click track under transport and metronome setup. So that's my setup. I want Cubase to click during count in. Cubase gives me a count in of two bars in a time signature at record start position. You have other options as well. It's totally up to you. But I assume if you're a musician who plays a real instrument, uh, this is really helpful. Oh, and by the way, this is how the click sounds in Cubase. You can also change the sound uh, with the other tabs here. It's a bit metronome overkill for me. I never use that, but I just show you the place. You love plugins. You have tons of plugins, am I right? You want to know where you can find them and manage them in Cubase. Right here, Studio and VST Plugin Manager. Here's the list with all your plugins, the instruments and all the information you need. Also interesting is the block list where all the broken plugins go mainly because they are, you see it here, please note, 30 second bit plugins are no longer supported. I think it's since Cubase 10 or 10.5, something like that. At first it was a bit shocking <laughs> that old plugins uh, stopped working in Cubase. But it makes sense if you think about it and after a couple of years it's totally normal and most of the old stuff should be available in 64-bit as well. And of course there are third-party plugins you can use as a workaround. This little cogwheel here is very interesting because you can manage uh, custom directories on your computer. For example, I have another hard drive where I've installed various plugins. Here you can make sure that Cubis knows about all your custom places and finds all your plugins. If you often work with complex programs like Cubase, for example, you know how important key commands are. You find Cubase key commands under edit and here key commands. And the most interesting thing about this is that you have this huge list of literally everything that Cubase can do. Just scroll through the list and open the submenus just to get an idea. And please do the same with edit and preferences. Because you can customize Cubase like crazy and this is definitely a place you want to check out. Whew, that was fun. <laughs> uh, please let me know in the comments if you still want to know more about this and that. I'm open for everything and um, will definitely make more videos with Cubase and about Cubase. Because Cubase is my only DRW since 30 years or so. Wait, almost, almost 30 years I believe. Wow, that was a really different time back then. <laughs> That's it for today. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye bye.
Also if I have a 7, 8 bar, it would... Bass. 